So welcome, Ken. And I'm really glad to see you and uh, to have the opportunity to talk with you and to present uh, to my viewers and, for, of course, and to your viewers, because you're going to share this uh, video in this interview. Uh, I'm really interested because we, unfortunately, last year, we scheduled in Romania your uh, your own program, which is um, the um, uh, the oh god, <laughs> silver mastery, <laughs> mastery, yeah, mastery. Uh, the, the silver mastery. You call it silver mastery, but it's your mastery uh, based on 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 uh, what you learned in so many years. Uh, first of all, uh, Ken Kasha, he's the international training director for Silva Method, and he has been with the Silva Method since, I can say, almost the early beginnings when, when Silva Method started in the United States. You were a student, uh, as I recall your, your uh, when, when, when you told me about the, your beginnings. So everything started, uh, you met actually the Silva Method. Uh, when you were a student, and it helped you, first of all, uh, you, you you did the course, then you became an instructor, and then you started uh, started with started you created actually, in time your own product, which is Silva Mastery, and we scheduled mm -hmm. last year to have the Silva Mastery in Romania. But unfortunately, the pandemic closed everybody. So we, we stayed home. And well, we had then to shift, everybody had to shift to the online events because this was planned to be in a venue and we, are, we were used to have at least a hundred people uh, in the venue because it's a great event and uh, uh, the energy in, in the venue is great. People, the, the fact that people, they're working with each other and uh, they're interacting is really something that I, I miss, I miss. So we have one, it's, it's already a year since we are working online, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm positive about the fact that one day we're gonna go back to the venue and we're gonna teach in the venues also online because it has its advantages, but for sure, I'm really uh, looking forward for the day and the moment when you're gonna come here to Romania and teach us the mastery, but till then, uh, I think that everybody needs uh, will be pri privileged to know about yourself and about your program, the Silver Mastery. So, uh, when 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 did it take birth of the Silver Mastery? That's my first question. Mm -hmm. I mean, when did you get the idea of of creating this product, which is really great? It's a two day mm -hmm. seminar from morning till evening, and really great stuff you can learn there. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, truth be told, I could say I started when I was 19 mm -hmm. and immediately got involved, was mentored by Jose, spent a lot of time with him. And uh, you're very correct that in the early 70s, that was the heyday of the Silver Method because we were so new. And there are a number of really key people throughout the United States who helped put the Silver Method on the map. And we started uh, expanding throughout the globe. It was also our heyday because everybody was investigating Jose and the methodology. So we got a lot of free publicity. I've been on TV, radio shows, all these you know, major newspapers. So I say that because that's really what contributed to the evolving of mastery. So I call it Silver Mastery because I love teaching the Silver program. It's so powerful. As much as I'm skilled in other modalities, I just find, I think it's, it really gives the best value with yeah. that. So I love being with people who have made that shift already, like we all do when we experience life and intuition system. When we do them together, we call it the immersion because there's a shift in our consciousness. There's a shift in our state of being. There's a shift in how we view the world, but also in our belief systems and what we believe possible. So that's how what contributed to the beginning of mastery because whether you call it silver mastery or life mastery or any kind of mastery in any profession, let alone our personal lives, it's really an inside game. It's not about the knowledge. Knowledge is important, 
Wisdom is important. You know, information, education, very important. However, there are a lot of people who just become consumers of information and they're very well educated, but they don't apply it or they don't know what to do. And intellectually, they understand, oh yeah, I've been there, done that, I know that. I. And you and I, we both, you hear this in your classes all the time, and it gives us pause, doesn't it? It's like, oh, here we go again. Oh yeah, I know all this, I read all these books. And it's in, and it's on my YouTube channel, I've asked a question to people when they say that. That's fascinating, yep. that's great. I'm, I'm glad, and you probably know more than I do. Tell okay. me though, are you using it? Have you integrated it in your life? Exactly. And some people have been truthful and said, well, not really. <laughs> And, you know, things are a mess. And that's what mastery in any profession, in any aspect of our lives is about. It's about integrating, making it a part of you so that we live the principles. So in answer to your question, I would say that in the early days from 1971 when I started up to 1984, 85, like, like you, like all of us, you know, we have instructors all over the world. And I was teaching in New England, particularly in Boston and then here in Connecticut in a very small area, not the world. But when Jose selected me, God bless him, <laughs> so to become the first to join him on the international staff to do advanced training, that's yeah. what contributed the big time because it opened up an a window of opportunity for me to get even more interaction with graduates globally. When I was in Boston, uh, it's interesting, our director and people had much more experience and they were, you know, had bigger names. Mm -hmm. But I was in the trenches with the graduates every day, conducting small groups of 20 and 30 in homes practicing. So I, 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 every month I was, had interaction with hundreds, literally over hundreds of grads and hearing their woes, what worked, what didn't, where they were stuck. So what I, what I would say to you is I began to compile and it helped me be a better instructor. It helped me anticipate questions. In 1984, when Jose asked me to travel the world, that's how you and I met. Actually, we met before then in, in 2010. We've become brothers from another mother uh, since then. Uh, I've just add that, by the way. I've, and I appreciate you in, in doing this. And when he and I, by the way, those of you who follow right, when, when we do our frequent Zoom catch-up calls. Uh, we really should have a clock, a timer, <laughs> exactly. because Somebody my wife, uh, right, or a bell. Well, my wife will show up and kind of, you know, because <laughs> it's time for dinner or something, and his wife will show up and uh, or his son if he's in the room. It's the funniest thing, and and then we realize, oh God, time is flying by. So we will want to do something and teach you something here. But this question is important because it, it sets up the, the background. So my point is, I started traveling the world doing graduate programs. And back then we called it the graduate seminar. And there was a, a specific curriculum and specific tools we were teaching. And at the time, only Dr. Wilfred Hahn, Dr. George Dessau, Harry McKnight, who was my mentor, one of the early, earliest instructors mm -hmm. in the late 60s, and, um, and, and James Needham, and these are people who I modeled and I was constantly with them in their programs following them. So I was teaching that program, but I added my own aspect. Mm -hmm. As time went by though, I would say in the early, mid-1900s, mid, mid, 19, mid 1900, 1996, there was a shift in the organization and more and more directors, well, I don't think you were a director then yet, but more and more directors were then allowed. Before, it was a privilege. There were only four of us in the world. And then they made a shift. And more and more directors internationally were then teaching the same program, again, with their own twist. Yeah. And Jose himself and people at Silver International said, Ken, I think it'd be good for you to redefine the program, you know, recalibrate it. And that's how Mastery was born. So I took my content and I've designed a number of them, or five or six very specific guided meditations that have obviously been influenced by my work with the Silver Method. Mm -hmm. But frankly, you don't have to be a Silver graduate. I mean, I could customize it for anybody interested in personal and spiritual development, mm -hmm. um, you know, with that. 
So it's, it's constantly evolving. And now there's a lot of brain science and neuroscience going on, and I get coached by neuroscience researchers. I'm constantly updating it. But the point is, yes, I could customize it, and I'd enjoy doing that. But having the passion that I have about the silver tools and working with people who have made that shift, I mean, they get it, they know, and their question is, but how can I make it work better? How come sometimes I get results and sometimes I don't? And sometimes things flow so, yeah, this is great. You know, you hear this, right, Gary? They say, oh, man. Exactly. And other times I feel like I'm hitting a wall. Well, I have made that my mission to understand that, all the factors. And I've done a lot of studying of, of what now has become known as positive psychology, a lot of studying of metaphysics, a lot of study of of uh, even some wisdom teachings. And especially now as science, as much science-based as possible, and began to explore that with people. And that's what I mean, it's just constantly evolving. Next time I'm in Romania, and we've, I've been there a bunch of times, although I can cover the same material, frankly, I, I ask people, please, with respect, understand, yes, you know a lot, and you've, and you've invested a lot in your knowledge. And the knowledge is cool, and it's helpful, but what good is it if you're not able to apply it and actually utilize it and make a lasting shift in your life? And that's what mas true mastery is about. And so if we're calling it silver mastery, and typically when I travel, it's designed to support, to build on the foundation of life and intuition system, which is an all, if you haven't experienced it, it's awesome. I mean, and any program that you do after, you'll get 10 times more out of it. Well, I'm approximating. You'll get a lot more out of it because you'll have tools to bring it to life. And so we do a lot of work with altering our state of consciousness and what we call an alpha and theta training, as you know, where we learn faster, we learn easier, where we are shifting our focus to a subjective mode of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> It's my long-winded answer to, to your question, although I, I hope it helps people to understand that it's really about integrating what you know. And even when reviewers come into the class, you know, the immersion, like in April, April, you know, you just started to finish life system next weekend, you're doing intuition system. I'll be starting in the middle of April doing life and intuition system. And even when people come in who are reviewing, they tell me, God, Although I know the material, and I've heard you before, Ken, even if it's the same, you know, same instructor with the same instructor, I'm hearing things very differently, and it's making more sense to me. It's like peeling layers of an onion. And I invite our, our listeners to really take heed to that. Whether you do silver or whatever it is you do, is <clears throat> the challenge is you got to do the inner work. If you're not doing the inner work, it's just an intellectual exercise. And the intellectual exercise is fun, it's cool, it's, you know, it's a healthy thing to do. You got to ask yourself though, are you actually living a better life? Are you actually creating, you know, is your best self emerging in all that you do more so than not? Are you in a flow where it seems like the universe has got your back? Have your odds increased? Those of you who know my story, I was, it's very easy for me to talk about odds and risk assessment because I was raised uh, by gamblers, and when most when most young boys were playing ball with their dads or wrestling, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I was at the racetrack with my dad. I was at killer card games, and what's funny is then the next night I was at the Rosary Society meeting with my mom. <laughs> yeah. My mom would take me to church and all the Rosary Society meetings, and my tag, dad would take me. But it taught me a lot, and the point is, what you're looking is to improve the quality. And, and that's what mastery is. To, where well, you're not perfect, but you have a higher degree of competence. And when you have a higher degree of competence, that will give you more courage to do more, <laughs> you know, to try something more out. And that, so let me stop <laughs> and, and let you continue. No, uh, I was just uh, <clears throat> trying to work it out here because uh <clears throat> the post went through so I, I reposted our link and uh well it seems that 
they're they, they're gonna start to connect through the uh the link i posted on facebook because well let, that's it well, i we i had no luck with facebook with screening directly on facebook but however uh we're i'm gonna post this this video this recording uh on my facebook page and uh well, maybe, maybe later, later, I don't know, sometimes in April, uh, we can make a Q&A session. But however, we already have some participants here. So probably we're going to we're going to have time to do some uh, Q&A today also. Uh, not with everybody, but uh, at least something. I I'm used to have much more participants, but that's it. Well, anyhow. Uh, oh, may I salute you, by the way, because we wanted to do this and I've experimented too. And and um, full disclosure here, we are not, uh, what do you call them? We're not techies. That's not our passion. Yeah. And it's a little bit of a distraction to play with that. And we know, uh, you know, for that. So, but we're learning slowly but surely so that we can serve you better. So Thank thankfully you. we can record. Definitely. Well, at least we're going to have the recording and they're going to be able, everybody is going to be able to watch it later on uh, because uh, I, this time I'm going to, uh, actually I'm going to ask my, my, my technical friend to help me out with putting this on Facebook, on my Facebook page so that everybody can see it. It's going to be also on YouTube. And I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, I'm going to have success with the, um, with uh, translating and subtitling what we are talking. However, uh, as you know, in Romania, a lot of people know uh, English, they speak English, <laughs> so they understand English. So it's not, it's not going to be a, a dif as difficult uh, to, to talk with them. Yeah, uh, and may, I, may I add something too? Is, um, by the way, I, I love doing this work and I love being able to do that and and everybody who's watching, whether you're watching the replay or you're just signing in now, really you honor us with your presence. So just yeah. note that I will pay attention. I will post this on my page. Rico is going to post it on his page. And I will do my best to pay attention to any comments or questions that may come later. <clears throat> and I'll go in and I'll answer them. Give me time. For example, I just I just did a, an interview um, what, just a week ago today. Yeah. And I've been going on his YouTube channel and there's been dozens and dozens of comments. It was a wonderful interview and I've been answering and people have been emailing me. So I do pay attention to that. Um, this is important. Well, you had the interview with... Um, um, Brian Scott. Uh, Brian Scott. Uh -huh. on, on New Rea on New Rea what do you call it? New Reality Revolution. Mm -hmm. And he loves the silver method. I found him by accident. One of my graduates referred him to me. And I went down to his channel and he's talking about Bob Stone, Robert Stone, who I worked with. I knew personally when he was living in Hawaii and I did the graduate program in Hawaii. And he wrote the book, The Silver Method, The Silver Mind Control Method for Business Managers, which is now available thanks to his son, Dennis Stone, because it went out of print and he's republishing everything. There's some you know, great, great books you know, to reference. Just Google books, Silver Method. And there are a number, especially ones written by Jose, exactly. by Jose himself. And usually there's a co-author. The source. <clears throat> yes. The source. Uh, now, um, the mastery, that, that's great because actually that's also my experience. You know, uh, at, uh, at the beginnings when I became instructor and I started to teach in 1993, uh, I was expecting that everybody is going to be or is going to act the same I did that is going to integrate it and it's going to become part of a daily life. So um, <laughs> I was very surprised when uh, during the years I, I discovered that a lot of people is not integrated as much as I did. Uh, so one question, the first question was, am I doing something wrong? You see, I, I question myself because maybe I was not teaching properly. Maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong. 
but uh, actually doing this this research, I found out that uh, it's game changing. I mean, Silva method, uh, it's really a life changer, game changer. It's a change. It's a huge change in everybody's life. So, uh, so I, I usually say that if they, after the, the four day, the civil life system and civil intuition system, or at least after the civil life system, when we see each other in two, three years, they, they're going to tell me just that they use the three fingers techniques and they, and they're answering to the question, how are you better and better? I did my job because it's really difficult to integrate something in your life which is completely new but not only that it's new but many times it's something it's 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 completely on the opposite side of what of what you were doing till that day so this is why i think that the, ma the mastery program is emphasizing very good in in, a, in very specific and nice ways how can you integrate the silo method on a daily basis in your life and and so that it becomes your way of living way of acting and reacting to different situations well yes we are very happy to see you too we have already some comments so hello to everybody uh thanks for attending this this really great uh webinar this interview uh hmm. everybody knows that you're ken kosh everybody knows knows me so uh it's a day program and it's and it's um well actually just for uh, for everybody um uh because i care very much on uh, on the translation when ken, ken goes and goes around the world and he uh, he teaches the mastery um uh, he's speaking english so uh, there's always a need for somebody to translate it in a local language. And uh, I worked with foreigners many times. And I don't know, maybe maybe it's something wrong with me. But uh, I worked also with translators. The idea is that when you have a specific language and uh, specific expressions for some for a newbie to translate is very difficult. So this is why, actually, I never took the mastery. I <laughs> I translated it twice, <laughs> but I never took the course. I've never been in the class with, with Ken listening to the mastery. I had to translate. I had to do everything. So when I translate, I focus a lot on translation. And it's weird because uh, yeah, it's really weird because I'm Serbian, my mother Punk is Serbian, and I'm translating <laughs> to Romanian. What I, what an American guy is telling to everybody. So, uh, <laughs> but I think that that I that I manage both languages pretty good, so that I can so I can manage the translation. So I I really look I'm looking forward for the next mastery when I can be just the pupil. I can be <laughs> you know the participant and not to translate. So the idea is that uh, just for the record, everybody to know that during those two days, I'm more translating than actually participating uh, to the event and doing what everybody does, what everybody does. So uh, it's a great event because then you see the, the, the change on everybody's uh, face, attitude, body position and everything. Uh, you have a lot of techniques during those two days. I mean, we have a lot of, a lot of mental techniques, mental exercises. But not only that, we have a lot of, you have a lot of um, practical things that you can apply on a daily basis. I mean, you don't have to, to, to become somebody else, but you have a lot of practical <clears throat> things which we agreed that we're going to talk today because we're not going to talk about the whole program which is two days it's huge there i mean we can talk i think that we can talk about the mastery program six days for for a two day program uh you have really some great exercises uh, so mental exercises which are, are really looking forward for the next mastery in romania or everybody else every, every or somewhere else that i saw that, that i can participate but uh we're, we were talking about transforming and this is this is uh the 
the, the um, toxic emotions into healing emotions. This is what we, what we agreed to talk today about toxic emotions and how to transform toxic emotions in something positive in our life. Because this is all about, that's about, uh, that's about it. I mean, silver method is not uh, saying that bad things are not happening around us, but it's accepting the facts, however, changing them to our advantage so that we can use life in a better way and we can use the events in a better way. So let's let's talk about uh, about these toxic emotions because we have toxic emotions, we have toxic people, we have toxic environments, uh, we have a lot of toxicity around us. What can we do about this? Um, I was creating a list in my head as you're going on all these toxic things, and um, it's a framework that I'd like to share with everybody that yes. we can start. Mm -hmm. As time allows, I'll go into it as deep as we can, but it'll certainly give you a roadmap. So whether you're a silver practitioner, if you're a silver practitioner, frankly, I think it'll be easier because I'll reference some techniques you can use. And if you're not, I don't know what your background is, so I'm not able to reference it. But just to add one other thought, you we're joking about the translation. That's one of the things I really appreciate about your ICO is when I'm there, you as a fellow instructor, they're getting two of us and guiding and he knows all the nuances and the tools and the techniques and what I'm referring to so we're able to really roll and get so much more done and he's reading the meditations in you know in in Romanian so rather than having a translator which is okay I've done that and it works but I much prefer when we have that it just seems to so wow and I want people to know you're just you're just you're so committed to this and really the message is Regardless of what it is we study, if we don't have some follow-up or support, you're going to slip back into old patterns. So we all have a default. And the way our body, the way our brain is wired, we are wired, believe it or not, to look for problems. It's part of survival and security. And before I go into this, because it's important that we understand this, part of what mastery is about is creating a state of being that allows your best self to emerge. And that state of being has to be one of hope and promise and calm and peace. It doesn't mean we're perfect, but if we're in survival, if we're in scarcity consciousness, if we're constantly worrying about what's going to happen next, exactly. that puts us into survival. The brain takes over, and that's why the most common reason why people forget what they know, don't use what they know, and they slip back by default into those old patterns that don't get us what we want. And this is what Reiko was alluding to before, is <laughs> he's so honest. Was I, am I teaching it properly? Yes, you are. But it takes time and support. And it's one of the things I appreciate. Here we are, you know, we're making fun of ourselves about with doing the Facebook Live. Here we are, since 1966, the Silver Organization, and we're still with people offering. You know, and most of us do it for the love of it. We're not marketing people. We're not looking to, you know, scale up, et cetera, and have this big, huge, you know, exactly. mega, exactly. I mean, we do want to change, help change the world you know, with that. But that support, without that support, we're doomed to slip back. So it's important, I want to say to you as we go through this, that you want to find a vehicle of support to have people in your life. They don't have to be your family. If they are, it's even better. If they live with you, even better, but it doesn't have to be. But people who have like mind, who you can openly share with. One thing's like, and there are few, very few people, there are a few people, only a few instructors, who I spend time with regularly to, nowadays is, you know, by Zoom, because it's so supportive. You know, we can talk very openly about things that I'm not able to with anybody else. Well, I can, but they don't really get it. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying to you, my friends, is it's important to have that. And when you're in, in the Zoom, one thing great about Zoom is we do the breakout rooms. And I'm an old school guy. I prefer in person. But, and I, I'm not saying this to brag, but I think I've developed, and I'm sure you have too, a degree of mastery with the Zoom that people are telling me, Ken, I've been with you in person. And it's just about the same. You know, you're, you're hitting your marks. There are things that you have to do to keep people engaged and that, and that we manage that. I hope it doesn't replace, though, the in person. 
So I just want to say, what we're aiming for is to create a state of being that helps us to navigate life with more grace, more ease, because our best self is emerging. And, we're, and you need repetition. And I don't care how much you know. And that's one of the things I noticed with the big, I won't mention name, but you can guess everybody, big marketing companies. And every time you buy something, and it's a great course, they're the next, literally, every, almost every day selling something more, or at least every week. And I understand that's their job. I understand. But how much can you absorb? How, and if you're going to really absorb something, it takes time. It takes patience. It takes concentrated amounts of time and repetition. So whether you, and, and that's what I urge people, is people say, Ken, if this is so great, why would I come back? Because unless you're a perfect human being, you're like peeling layers of an onion. So I just wanted to preface that, that this yes, time, let me get... That if you're perfect, then I think you would, you're, you're here in the, the, this place is a wrong place for you. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't even be here. So we're going to go high tech here. I was going to stand and use my Zoom room with the board and everything, but I thought this would be more fun because you can see. Yeah. And and if you're watching this, you want to take some notes because I'm going to have to go through this quickly. We're not, you know, we're obviously not spending two full days. So it's a framework that I've called Six Steps to Resolve Inner Conflict mm -hmm. or How to Transform Toxic Emotions into Healing Emotions. So the point is, I want everybody to just think now. Think for some examples of yourself in your life. All of us, let's think of that. That when you feel conflict, so maybe you've got a new position. Thanks to this craziness in the world today in the pandemic, People have had to make choices, hard choices, to pivot. Pivot, for example, right? Go and I and, and fellow instructors had to make a choice: pivot and go online and do you know virtual, or you're screwed. Nothing, and then our people suffer, and we're not able to offer our services. So some, many, I know many of you are in that same position. You're working from home. You've had to make changes or adjustments in that. You might be looking at maybe changing profession now. One good thing in the pandemic is caused people to really turn within and really recognize what's important to them. What is it that they really want? So that's the first step because if you're not sure what you want and we're like this, you know, scurrying, <laughs> that creates conflict and that it's like trying to make a decision. If you're having difficulty making a decision, there's a conflict of interest if you're out of alignment with your values, if you're out of alignment with what, who or what's really important to you, but you don't know it consciously, notice, underline that word, if you're not aware of it consciously, that's what creates that resistance. That's what creates that, oh, what step should I take? Should I do this? Should I do that? That's what demotes us and causes us to feel a lack of, of confidence. So I just want to, let's be clear about what we mean by conflict of interest. Uh, it could also be a relationship. Um, my wife Barbara and I, it, 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 she's not in the room now, so I, I'll speak very freely. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking, but I'm joking. But we've been together since September 12th, 1972. We've been together and committed. Uh, 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 one of the uh, rarest uh, husbands that I've met that you that you remember the date <laughs> usually <laughs> usually usually the wives and the girlfriends they remember the date <laughs> uh, well you okay i gotta tell you because if, if you like stories people is anything where there's a lot of emotion without emotion nothing changes remember that you can say positive thoughts to yourself all you want positive affirmations but it's the emotion behind it that drives it that helps to make it permanent. <laughs> so how I remember is I, would, I had a high school sweetheart. We grew up together, went through a lot together, and she was coming to visit me that weekend. Mm -hmm. And the 13th is my wife's birthday. And mm -hmm. so we met the day before her birthday and we're talking and it happened to be the day before my girlfriend was flying in from New York area to Boston where I was in school. So. Barbara has reminded me of this, not so much now, but earlier. So many, we weren't even an item, you know, so many times. So it's hard, it would be hard not to remember. 
and then we, you know, were together, not together, we lived together, and we, we got married in 78. But my point is, it, it's not a, it, it's not this Hollywood romanticized story of, oh, like we're watching the show Podark. Oh my God, if you haven't watched it, you gotta watch it. Every guy, you will get some incredible lines, and if you mean it sincerely, ways to express. I'm like, whoa, and we're both, you know, laughing about it. But it's been up and down, and we've had conflicts for a lot of reasons. She was a single mom for a while because I was traveling the world 60% of the year, actually almost 70% of the year. I was gone for a week, two weeks at a time. When I went to Australia, I was gone five weeks. And that created conflict in our relationship that we had to resolve. And you've got to take time. You've got to you know, look at it. So my point is, it could be in your health, like with now. Should I vaccinate? Should I not? Should I close down my business? Should I not? Should I wear a mask? Should I not? And then people politicize it. And then there's all sorts of stories. And, you know, you wonder, who the heck do I believe? Mm -hmm. So you get the idea, guys? All of that. So I'm not trying to give a be-all and end-all. But this framework, I think, has universal appeal, regardless of your background. Fair enough? So there's six steps. All right. So. Shall I go through it? Did you want to add something? You okay? Go. I, I love listening to you laugh. By the way, you have such a good resonance in your voice, and 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 I also say you're one of the kindest and lo most loving instructors I've had the pleasure to work with. Thanks. And that's probably why we continue. So number one step, I just want to double check and make sure you've got to acknowledge the circumstances. Can you can you put it closer to? to a little bit more? Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Perfect. Great. Acknowledge the circumstances. Hello. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, you know, if I was on the board, I could have wrote it bigger. My, so, key. Now, I know we all know what that means, but that mean, doesn't mean wallow in it. That doesn't mean worry about it. That doesn't mean think about it constantly. That doesn't mean vent on everybody who will listen about it constantly. That doesn't mean keep repeating it and repeating it. And re that's not venting. That's dumping on people. Exactly. Whatever we resist persists. So the first step, even therapeutically, the first step is to identify the problem, to even recognize that there's a challenge, there's a problem. So avoidance doesn't help. And a lot of people are avoiding the challenges, the issues, and avoiding the inner work and watching excessive Netflix, what we call binging on Netflix, or excessive you know, social media on their phones, and they're buried in that, or excessive watching the news. Yes, those things are fun and important, and I like a good show myself too. What I'm going to invite you to do, though, is you've got to ask yourself, am I avoiding what I really need to pay attention to and think about? Am I avoiding the challenges? So it's a powerful thing. It's, a, it's probably, it's one of the big causes of resistance, one of the big causes of getting stuck. People get stuck because of avoidance. For example, I'll give you a, a, a quick example. So again, you acknowledge, you identify like a reporter, you're looking, okay, this is what's going on. So if you're using mirror of the mind, silver grads, hint, hint, it's a powerful technique, that in whole viewing. The first step is acknowledge your challenge, your present circumstances, and accept this is the truth. This is what I'm experiencing. You're not being negative. You're acknowledging, you're recognizing this is my current reality. Once you do, you don't want to give it much more energy unless circumstances change. So a quick example, there's a, it, 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 it's an old thesis, but now neuroscience backs it up. Dr. John Sarno, S-A-R-N-O. I talk about him a lot. Healing back pain. And he did this whole thesis about TMJ, you know, that terrible tightness in the jaw that from clenching and stress. And he made this whole thesis about pain in the neck, pain in the back. And his opinion as a chiropractor working with tens of thousands of patients, he had a waiting line, excuse me, waiting list of people to see him for two years. Did you hear me? two years, and he had to stop accepting pay new patients and only would accept them from the metropolitan area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, because he couldn't handle it. 
it was working. And he found that migraines, again, I'm not a doctor, consult your doctor, consult your healing practitioner, nor my psychologist, and I pretend to be, got to give that little, what do you call it, disclosure, there's a term for it. Exactly. You know what I'm referring to, folks, but he found, read his book, Healing Back Pain, that the leading cause of pain in the body, especially if you haven't had an injury, and there hasn't been something that you know the cause, what triggered, caused it, because a lot of people have back pain and pain all over the body and they don't know why and they go to see specialists and they can't figure it out and the leading cause of inflammation is stress distress worry our emotions run our physiology and what he found he began to observe was it seemed this is his opinion it seemed to be easier for people to avoid the emotional pain of dealing with it of talking to a therapist of talking to a dear friend of talking with you know the spouse your significant other because the physical pain was easier to manage and deal with than the emotional pain and we've all been through emotional pain and it can be debilitating temporarily just can knock the um life out of you with that so it's an important step and it's not going to go away you've got to start that i wish you know we could do more the second step however is everybody see this let me just put it closer for a moment, is self-awareness, is you've got to make some connections and figure out what you can, so learn what you can. So a question to write down here is, what can I learn from this? This is what I'm experiencing. What can I learn from this? So Can't many people- A little bit closer to the camera and a little to your right. Great, perfect. Great. To... Uh, it's too much. <laughs> Okay. I'll repeat it. Self-awareness is the second step. Learn what you can. And when, you watch, when you're watching the replay, you want to go back and study the replay. When you go back and do that, guys, then you can just pause it. Hit the pause button and do that. So self-awareness, learn what you can. Make some connections. So what that means is, is literally you're making connections in the brain, by the way. You're recognizing what's triggering you. So in a relationship with, a, with a, a friend, with a colleague, with your boss, <laughs> with your significant other, <laughs> we all have triggers, do we not? That yeah. cause us to become defensive, angry, and maybe we say something we wish we hadn't, or we raise our voices, you know, to, which doesn't make it better, and people don't hear. In fact, I guarantee you, if you're raising your voice and you're yelling, they don't hear better, they will close down and go into a defensive mode. And it's like they have this big, huge shield, this big, huge wall, and you won't get your message. They won't feel you. They won't connect with you. They want to run away and they block you out. Exactly. Soften your tone. Speak softly. Talk softer, you know, quietly. But part of what that is, is recognizing some of the, some of the um, triggers that set you off that might cause you to come out of being your best self. I mean, there are, think, I want you, everybody now, think about what are some of the triggers. It may relate to your past, and some of it may relate to a past trauma. And if it was a true, a true trauma, you may need intervention. You may need professional help. There's nothing wrong asking for professional help. <laughs> my daughter would love me. My daughter's a clinical psychologist, new clinical psychologist. Her boyfriend, his specialty is in neuropsych. And she's always reminding us mom and dad how important it is. And it is because you have a professional who can guide you to make sure that there's nothing more serious going on because if it's not taken care of, it can become a clinical problem where your whole chemistry changes and then you might need medication exactly. because of the chemistry changes. So it's not a light thing. I don't mean to make it light and I don't claim to have a be on and all, but this framework works and what I want this to be at least a roadmap to point you. So here's an example. If I may use a personal one. Um, well, yeah, no, I'm going to instead use a personal one. I think this might be relevant for some people. With young woman, I don't remember her age, but we're working together. She's doing Mirror the Mind to work on managing her weight and changing some habits. So this is her thing, not mine. And she came up with that she was eating way too many sweets, mm -hmm. especially chocolate. I like chocolate too, especially dark chocolate, which by the way, we're told by science is far better for us. So if ever, Reiko, you want to give me a gift, 
Barbara and I love dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sort of half joking, half serious with them. In seminars, I bring it up, and I did it by accident, and then people give you gifts with it. So here's the point. Even though she, you ever ask yourself, why do I keep doing what I know I shouldn't be doing? I know better. I found out, I've been instructed not to do this behavior anymore, whatever the behavior is. I can't believe it. Well, I guess it's a habit. Well, what's triggering that habit to cause us to slip back into it? That's the point. And most people are sincere about their health, their well-being, about their personal development, their spiritual development, or their weight management. It's really not so much about weight, it's about your health. So she said, why do I keep slipping? So here's what she found. She did an exercise that we do, in, you may remember it in, um, in Mastery, called the cave, that you, did, you, you, you translated so beautifully. And we go back in time mentally you know, a, what's called a, re, a, a mental age regression. And you can even explore so-called past lives. We do a lot of fun things in mastery, by the way, exercises. Again, because people are there who have a foundation to work on, and they already know how to meditate. They already know how to work in the alpha and theta dimension. And I'm coming in and giving them more input and, and tools with that. So here's what she found. As she went back into her childhood, she found herself, she remembered crying and upset. I wouldn't call it traumatized, but really upset and feeling neglected because her dad was leaving constantly, going away on business trips. Mm -hmm. And she, every time he left, she was crying and upset and so, you know, and then, you know, kids get over it. And then when he came home, so this is a self-awareness, learn what you can. She's jumping for joy and she's thrilled. Notice, my friends, two states of emotion, very powerful. This is where we imprint it. This is what drives the imprint and makes the impressions on the brain. So first, the trauma, the upset, the negative emotion, and then the joy, the positive emotion. Both work the same way as far as opening up you know, the imprint. And he would bring her, guess what? Chocolate, goodies, candy. Wow. And to her she realized she was associating, my dad loves me, he's home, and he brought me chocolate. And that's how the subconscious works. If we are not consciously aware, if we are not consciously attuned to the mechanisms, it's called neuroassociative conditioning. We learn by association. So in that state of high emotion, the delicious nutrition, oh, I don't know nutritious, I don't know what he brought her, but you know, the sweets, and it makes that imprint, I'm loved, he's caring for me. You get the point? So as she's growing, and that's why everyone jokes about it, but when people get upset, where's the chocolate, where's the ice cream, and then they're stuffing themselves with it because they have an association with being loved, being appreciated with the sweets. Yeah. Putting aside, it tastes great, but does it really taste so great anymore if it's causing health problems where you can't walk the stairs, you can't get up in the morning, you feel like crap, and then you have excessive medical bills. <laughs> That's something we both ex experience is that people have less medical bills when they learn silver and actually practice it. So that's what I mean by, my friends, self-awareness, learn what you can, make some connections. Now that's just one example, there are dozens. I mean, you make those connections, then you take the power. That's what taking command of your life is all about then you can make a choice, a more intelligent choice, and it's not an issue. You're not like, oh God, I can't eat the chocolate because it's going to create a ah! That never works. That makes it worse. You make a choice that I choose health, I choose well-being. Once you've made that shift, and when you do it internally, what we, we call level, in your alpha, theta level, that's what makes it permanent. And then with enough repetition, as you learn in the silver class, in life and intuition system, you learn how to use the tools with a bit of repetition, maybe over 30 days, maybe at most 90 days. Most things, I'll just to be fair, most things you can make permanent. Mm -hmm. As, I hope that's clear. So number three, third step is, once you make the connection, you want to manage it, reframe it, and maybe it's forgiving. It's not always about forgiveness. You remember, by the way, I've changed the forgiveness exercise. Actually, we did it in Romania the last time I was there. And I made, and I just made, and I'm even doing it on Zoom. I did mastery, one mastery last year on Zoom. 
and they've made some adjustments and we had a blast. I mean, again, I don't want it to change, but I don't want it to. It's improving. Place. It's improving. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we you know, uh, the, the, people are basing on the feedback. So the manage it, reframe it means, okay, we've identified the problem. We've acknowledged it. If you're using mirror the mind, that's your blue frame. And then you're making, while still in the blue frame, some awareness, recognizing what the triggers are, what the connections are. It might be someone's tone of voice. I can remember my dad's tone of voice that one day, you know, with certain people you're with, and yet there's a certain tone. And I, rec you know, realized it was triggering me, slipping back into something, because again, that association that was made. When you recognize it, you can dismiss it. You can negate it. You can neutralize it. You can delete it. And that's what step three is all about. So this would be the white frame and mirror of the mind. If you're a student of my master, you might use power programming, or you might use holo viewing. You've got so many techniques. Um, if I may, you know, Rako, I mean, I know uh, many of our listeners and people watching the replay are also silver trained participants. Okay. So if I go back to to number one, acknowledge, I said the blue frame, but step number two, the self-awareness where you're making connections, understanding, okay, what are the triggers? What can I learn from this? Remember, you've got the glass of water technique you learn in life system, dream control technique you learn in life system, where if you're not sure about something that can give you insight, you put your subconscious to work while you're sleeping. How cool is that? <laughs> it's just, you gotta be mindful about it and there's an actual formula that helps you to clarify your intention and steps you take. Um, also, as we move into the end of life system, the laboratory, counselors can be used. You got a whole variety, a smorgasbord of technique. And then the ultimate would be caseworking, which is intuition. If I might say, by the way, if you've only done life system, you probably said, right, go, thank you. This is a good class. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ken. I really enjoyed it. But when you finish and do the whole thing, intuition system, the comments are usually, oh my God, whoa, my mother's got to take this. <laughs> because it, it has such impact. So this is where you start re-educating yourself. This is where the true transformation takes place. And again, it's an inside game. So you want to, in your eyes closed state, you want to relax, that lowers the defenses. You're shifting from a state of being that's not logic, that's not rational, that doesn't have critical thinking. If you start thinking, am I deep enough? Will this work? Forget it, it ain't, because you're gonna get in critical thinking and you're coming right out of it. So Mr. S wisdom schools have taught us, you gotta surrender. Bingo, I'm at my level, whatever that means, and then just apply it. So the idea is to get into a state of being where you're just very calm and relaxed and just allowing yourself to flow. And when you've got a tool that you learn in the silver program, like whatever it is, mirror the mind or holo viewing, it gives you a structure to help you establish control of a dimension of mind that usually you don't have control. Most common thing, people meditate, they wander all over the place or they fall asleep. <laughs> and that's, so the structure is important. So very important, whatever you do. Sometimes you need to forgive yourself. One of the one of the things I've been I talk about a lot okay. constantly is allow yourself not to be perfect. So one of the things Raiko and I have had to learn as presenters is we're doing the best we know how to do with what we know. Because if we keep comparing to others, oh I messed up. Then you go into survival mode, you go into scarcity mode, the brain takes over and you're not gonna think very clearly. So it really is an art. It is an art. And I'll say it's not easy. It's not easy and it's not a quick fix, but when you have the right training and the tools, it becomes not easy, but easier. And you have reliable access to resources and with proper support, you'll use them and work with it. So step number, whoops, step number four. Desires you, 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 you want. I mean, you're going to get the right uh, You're going to get the right results. The, you're going to get the results you desire. Exactly. Exactly. 
for them. So I'm going to show you, just for the fun of having made a little graphic. I made copies of, of my PowerPoints, which you don't need to use that much. I used to sail a lot, and I haven't lately and enjoy it. And although there's no sailboat in this picture, there's a quote by Jimmy Dean, of all people. And in America, we have a famous brand called Jimmy Dean Sausages. <laughs> he says, I can't change the direction of the wind. If you've ever been on a boat sailing and you're relying on the wind, I can't change the direction of the wind. It is what it is. We have to, part of acknowledging the circumstances is also accepting it is what it is. It is nature. It is the current reality. It is our current political system. It is the current whatever it might be that's going on. But I can always adjust my sails to reach my destination. Or I can make the adjustments within myself so that I can navigate these challenges more gracefully. So if I show you this, by the way, this is my almost my backyard. Right, and I, this is the river where you and I went and did that little video. It's on my YouTube channel. We were just had done healing. Reiko's Ultra Seminar, the healing program, which people love, by the way. They still talk about it, by the way, where we do holistic healing techniques. And um, next time he does it, if you haven't done it, you want to do it. It's a phenomenal program. So this is the Farmington River. And I go by here a lot. I make videos here. I, this is my refuge, not just during the pandemic, all the time for my workouts. I'm with that. I couldn't resist showing off a little bit. We get, um, sorry, can I go on? Yes, yes, please. Step number four, key. We all know about the attitude of gratitude. Appreciate or gratitude, whatever, how we even say, I like the term appreciate. There are reasons for it. I won't go into now, but even the research shows, generally speaking, it's easier for people to appreciate than to express love. I know love is a very high spiritual quality and so important for us. There are reasons for it. Quickly, some people have been burnt in love and they have a, it's a trigger. It's a, the word is a trigger because they have a negative association. I'll never love again. I'm not going to give of myself to that those dummies again or whatever it is, however they think. So why is this important? All the research, this is science. I'm not making this up. It's a good thing. Yes, I know it's a nice state appreciating, but you're appreciating the results you know you're going to get in advance. And if you're only getting a little bit of a result, I often tell people, there oh, Ken, I did my three to one method. Remember guys, gals, use your three to one method. And when I opened my eyes, I felt a little better. I felt a little bit calmer. Fantastic! Because they say, ah, but I didn't get really relaxed. And I still have a little ache here on my shoulder that's been with me for 20 years. Really? And you think it's going to go poof away like that? Sometimes it does. <laughs> but it's, you may need to address more. You may need more work there. There may be some damage to the muscle. You don't know that. But the point is, appreciate even a little bit of progress. And when you appreciate that, it's competence, right? And then you have a little more courage. It's called the confidence competence loop. Remember, I heard Brendan Bouchard bring that up to give credit. I love that expression. So as you develop more competence by getting more training, more lessons, you're working with your coach, you're working with Ryko as your coach, you're working with me as your coach, whatever, or you're in the class with us or whoever you're working with, exactly. that gives you the courage to do a little bit more, to apply more. The reason why often you don't use what you know is because of lack of confidence. Because nobody, I mean, right now, by a show of hands, I'm not able to see you, but I'll imagine you. Who would like to be disappointed? Everybody, show of hands. Who wants a big disappointment today? Yeah. Uh, well, of course, nobody. I'm being silly. So can you see strategically, oftentimes people do not take risk, do not do much because they don't want to be disappointed because it hurts emotionally. When you consciously understand that and you're aware of that and how that mechanism works, then it gives you the courage to be more, to, to take more risk, so to speak. So, number four, appreciate in advance. And my friends, I would say, no matter what progress you're making, every day, every day, in the morning, as part of your morning routine, as you enter your level, or as you do your meditation, or you just do some slow, deep breathing, just appreciate, just feel some genuine appreciation. It's how you build your emotion up. Just think and feel of anyone you appreciate is in your life, anything, and the night before bed. 
It puts you into that state of being where you're more open and you learn faster and easier. That's how I turned flunking out of college into graduating the highest of honors while also being a full-time silver instructor, by the way, using the three fingers technique. Number five would be what? Congratulate yourself. Congratulate yourself. Can you see that okay, my friend? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. That's a little bit up, 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 surfers. I didn't want to block my face. I'm too much of a ham. I don't want to block future. myself. Congratulate right. yourself, future self, face it. Congratulate. So what that means is, thank you, God. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, universe. Thank you, source. Thank you, whoever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Appreciate. I, 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 I find myself coaching a lot of business people, sales people, to bring up their, their game. And one of them is uh, selling um, insurance. Set a goal, a really lofty goal. This week, I want to get 10 new policies, 10 new you know, contracts. And, and that's high. And that would be really significant. Only got five. Sheesh. I really want the 10. Big mistake. Thank you. All right. I, I want to do better. I can do better. I did five. Appreciate it. Very important. So always congratulate yourself. Congratulate. Take time. My wife and I, every time I finish a class, we congratulate ourselves and we go out and we celebrate and we go to a restaurant that's a little bit more, you know, finer dine where we're pampered more and the service is impeccable. And it's, you know, it's not that I want to spend a lot, but I just want to say we deserve it, you know. And you've got to also have that feeling of deservedness, that you deserve to succeed. You deserve to have a better life. You deserve to be healthy. You deserve to say that to you and, and feel that. And that's what you're doing. The future self means, future patient. There's another exercise I created called future self. I even have them available. If, I, if you go to my, if I may say, trust yep. your intuition academy, trust your intuition academy.com. That's my website where I have digital products available and mini courses. They're very reasonably priced and they're discounted purposely. And admittedly, I designed them for silver grads. They have universal appeal, but to build on the on the foundation, a whole bunch of things, master classes, guided meditations, etc. But the future self is one such exercise, which means this: if you're in the white frame or the mind, or you're doing whole of viewing, my favorite, I think it's yours too. You told me, if I remember, is how will your life continue to improve? How will it benefit you and anyone you care about, not just today, but tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, over the next five and ten years? It's very important. Um, I'll just say briefly, the science behind it is, in psychology, you're getting used to it. You're getting familiar with the changes because nobody technically wants to make change. It's a big reason why people resist things is because if I become this better person, if my best self emerges, if I, ha if I start doubling my income, even though we say, yeah, 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 what would my life be like? Unconsciously, subconsciously, it's a resistance because we go into survival mode or security mode because when it's, we're, it's uncharted territory. That's all I say. There's more to it to go deeper. So when you future pace it like that, you're getting familiar with it. You're mentally rehearsing the positive outcome. So if you got to give a speech, if you've got to go on a job interview, if you've got to give a presentation, if you're going to take, uh, have a delicate conversation with somebody, at your, in your quiet, relaxed state, your alpha theta state, mentally rehearse it. That's what that means and the benefits to come. And that helps create a familiarity. Oops, sorry. And last and not least, the sixth step would be release it. Get on with your life. And always finish with, may the best for all involved occur. May the best for all involved occur. Whoa. What do you mean by release it? Okay, I'm just going to leave it there for a moment. Yeah. And remember, guys, you can go back, pause it when you're watching the replay, and go back over it. Release it means is, even though you're what we call the white frame, ah, oh, how wonderful, how joy, oh, yes. If we obsessively think about it, 
and I hear this, there's a lot of people being seduced by um, presentations that are rock and roll, high motivation, and it feels good, and it doesn't last, as I think we all know. And if you can, if you, if you, people often say, when we do the mirror of the mind, blue frame is once. Acknowledge it, circumstances, best you can. What are the triggers? Learn what you can, and then move on. You're done. From there on, you want to start thinking of a plan, of solutions, of the white frame, the solution, you know, the end result. But you don't want to be doing it constantly because if you are, you're becoming obsessive. And by the fact that you're doing it constantly, you're overdoing it. It would be like standing over your plants with water and watering and watering it and watering it every hour. Let me water myself. Yeah. You drown the, the plant. It only needs so much. So even with energy, it only needs so much positive energy because the risk is you're obsessing. And there's a difference between obsessive energy and passionate energy. So I do challenge and speak out when I've heard some thought leaders, big, huge names, and they talk like that passion. I agree, it feels good and it's exciting if it becomes obsessive. And I know I hear uh, entrepreneurs talk about, yeah, that obsession, you're moving. You got to be careful because if you, it, it just gets to a point where you're putting yourself in scarcity. You gotta allow it to germinate, give it time, give it time to take root. So your plants, you plant them, you water them, give them nutrition. If you repot a plant, same thing. But if you dig it up every day and say, hey, how you doing, buddy? Oh, you're looking good. And you spit for moisture, you pray on it, put it back. If you did that every day, I know I'm being ridiculous, It'll die because it's too much. That's what obsessive energy does. It's too much. So you're, um, you're, you're releasing it and you're getting on with your life and allowing it. But you've got to then pay attention to the feedback, make adjustments as needed. You got to have a plan. You got to have a strategy. I mean, these are the things we spend four days in life and intuition system building. And then when we work with graduates, we build on those two full days in mastery. So I'm, I'm, I'm not wanting to oversimplify it. The may the best for all involved occur, that's simply saying, hey, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to play God. You got to say, I'm just doing the best I know how to do with what competence I have developed in my life now. But sometimes we make mistakes and we think something is in our best interest and it's not. So it's just kind of a way of releasing to the universe, if you will, may the best, mean it. For the greater good, may the best for all involved occur. Too often people say, uh, 10,000 people are applying for a job. Only 1,000 are going to be hired, or 100, worse. <laughs> Why should I get it? Well, then you're, 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 you're misrepresenting yourself. You don't know. You do your best, and may the best for all involved occur. <clears throat> it's, kind of a, it's a spiritual principle. I learned it actually from Harry McKnight, not from Jose. Harry McKnight, who was one of our kind of founding fathers, Nell Dushi, Tara McKnight, and uh, Jim Need, and working with Jose in those early, early years. Great. <clears throat> wow. We already have two questions. And, uh, well, I think that sort of it, we already answered. Um, one question is uh, about trauma and regression. And I think that we, we managed, I mean, the, about, speaking about toxicity and these six steps, I think that now it's clear. Simona asked about that and about regression. Uh, she says, which silver uh, with silver method, if it's possible to do it by herself to do the work. Uh, well, usually, um, you know, sometimes you need guided meditation. Sometimes you need guidance. Uh, I mean. Uh, I, I met a lot of people yeah. who uh, they think that they can do it all by themselves. And I'm one who's telling that I'm not the most, I'm not the, the, the cleverest in the world. And I do need help. So this is why sometimes I need your opinion, Ken. This is why we, 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 we exchange our opinions and uh, what we learn and what we, <clears throat> what we think about different things. Sometimes now, we need guidance 
we can do by our, ourselves a lot of things but some things are better to be guided like for example personally um the cage the the technique from 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 the mastery the cave uh, the cave not the cave the cave uh i love it to be guided not to not to do it by myself because sometimes this is what i discovered sometimes i i i my desire to have a diff, uh, a sort of uh, a sort a one type outcome is going to influence the process so if I let myself guide it, uh, most of the times my rational mind is put it as, is put aside. It's, that means putting it aside and just go with the flow and be surprised. And sometimes when you're surprised, you got the right answer. I don't know. What do you think about? It? Well, a bunch of thoughts. One is, <clears throat> excuse me, what you were saying before the guidance. The tendency when we, we're accessing a subjective state of mind, typical of daydreaming or when we're dreaming at night. So it's not, the mind doesn't stop and it's moving. When you have a guided meditation, I, I myself, I use guided meditations, not every day, but at least a few times a week. And I find it keeps me on point because it allows me to let go and go really, really deep, staying awake and aware. But the, gui the voice of the guided meditation is following a structure and it keeps me on point to make sure I get the work done. And that's a big, huge advantage of the guided meditation. It allows us to get really deep with the workers. Second thing I wanted to say um, is um, I, I really feel such gratitude and, and deep appreciation for Jose for creating this method for us. It's a work of art. It's a work of art what Jose Silva did. And it wasn't easy for him in his early years. And yet, in the early days, there's a lot of misunderstanding of the principles. And I admit, I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but in those early days, I found instructors and even graduates, because we called it mind control, self-mind control, thinking for yourself, that I think what we misunderstood was we got to go it alone. And I remember, as an instructor, I'm wearing all the hats, doing everything. Most silver instructors do this for the love of it and could earn a heck of a lot more money in a different career and they wear all the hats you know of everything that it takes today it's become increasingly difficult to do that frankly because of technology unless you're a technology master and it's not easy you've got to get help but my point is as I look back at myself I mean I nearly went bankrupt several times for making mistakes with that so this thing about there's a lot of you can go really deep into this about getting help. As an example, uh, those of you in Romania, I don't know if you know, it's an old TV show I grew up on called The Lone Ranger. And then there was a remake of The Lone Ranger with Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the movie. The other actor who escapes me, the movie, which was not quite anything like the original Lone Ranger. If you play that song, all of a sudden I have flashbacks. It's a trigger. And there's great motion, they're one of my favorite shows. But the, even the Lone Ranger didn't do it alone. He had help. Tonto was his guide, his trusted confidant and friend and buddy. They were always together. And pe there's a quote, someone made that quote, even the Lone Ranger. And today, you hear everybody talk about their team, their team, their team, because a team can do more. A mastermind, however you want to call it, because when you're like mine, when you're in a graduate group, one of the things that's happening with the Zoom groups, every time you finish a class, somebody takes on the, the um, um, responsibility of organizing a follow-up. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is facilitate it. And then you're with people who you can talk freely with. That's support. And we all, um, frankly, every thought leader has observed this. And I have from days when I was close to one of these people watching, that if people don't have that kind of support, they're going to slip. But the other thing I heard about trauma, and by the way, Simona, I want to say shout out to you, a big hello, because I see you interacting with me and my posts on social media frequently. Thank you. I, uh, thank you. Thank you. And I see you sharing some of the posts. So I, I say hello to you because I, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we met too, in Romania, but forgive me because I've met so many people. But the point is this, is 
also a misunderstanding is we're not just a mind, we're not just a body. In the same way that we have to have a good health practitioner who we trust and rely on to make sure that we don't have chemical imbalances in our body, to make sure that we're not inadvertently poisoning ourselves, to make sure that we don't need something more, likewise psychologically. And unfortunately, I'm not one of those people, I'm so blessed to say, but some people have been seriously traumatized, sexually, physically abused, and that usually needs one-on-one -on -one attention with a qualified professional who knows how to handle that. So if, you, if anybody happens to be that person, you want to. And frankly, it's always helpful, even if it wasn't for minor things. I'll say, full disclosure, every once in a while, I go and sit with a the therapist. Barbara and I as a couple, every once in a while, we'll go in for some sessions because we're having difficulty. Our emotions get in the way. We've been triggered, and we're having difficulty getting through it. And then they help. We go through a few sessions, and it helps us to normalize things. Or, you know, life doesn't always give us what we want. And certain things, and I find myself, if, if, if I, Reiko said to me, I'm not going into detail the other day. He said, you're too attached to it. <laughs> and he's right. And it's a good, and it's, it's, it's not a positive thing all the time. And under circumstances, I sometimes need a good friend to talk and just kind of make sense of the craziness going on in my head or a professional. So honor yourself, honor your struggle and support yourself and love yourself enough to be generous enough to give yourself the gift of any kind of guidance, any kind of support that's within your means that can help. Yeah, but you can do it alone, Simona. I mean, however you want. It With depends the tools. on the situation. It depends on the conditions and everything. Yeah, most, most things you can, most you can. We have a second question, and this one is really nice because inspired me, is kind of, uh, inspiring me. Uh, the question is, how can I work with doubt? Doubting that I can do this, trusting that uh, that this can work, trusting myself, uh, I'm not doing etc. etc. But however, uh, the person, uh, the name of the person uh, who put this question is anonymous attendee. <laughs> First of all, if you want to get rid of doubt, uh, you're anonymous. Stop hiding. <laughs> of hiding i don't know there is nothing nothing to be ashamed of so i think the first step if you want to start trusting yourself show, show up do, do not be an anonymous do not hide but i think that can emphasize uh in the, those six steps uh not i think i mean I, I we heard it clearly and you can review all those six steps about self-trusting and about trusting yourself how do we build that on those six steps and it's one of the components uh one thing which is which i discovered is uh, is that uh you're not uh you don't have one self-trust but our the trust in ourselves is on different areas in life but so sometimes I can have a huge, I can hugely trust myself in my work, but I might doubt my abilities, I don't know, in uh, dating. So, so we have always to be specific, dear anonymous, uh, what field, what area of life, because I don't think that you don't trust yourself totally. At least you wrote the question, which is great. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to add something, too. Yes. Actually, I, the, I understand where you're coming from when people are anonymous. For a lot of reasons, social media is not always a good place to air everything, you know, under our names, and so I, I do get that. However, with the confidence to go back as a tool, if you're a silver-trained student, you've got a phenomenal tool with Life System in the three fingers that we added as of 2007, most parts of the world have introduced it called how to create a resource state. So one way to build confidence, this is, it's, it, it's probably one of the most important things, to have the confidence in yourself that somehow, some way, you'll figure it out. Not magically figure it out, because you're going to love yourself enough to investigate, to study, to explore, to ask for help, whatever it takes to do the inner work. So 
part of the, what the resource state is, if it's in your business, if it's in your uh, personal life, if it's in your love life, if it's in your dating life, if it's with friends, if it has to do with your health, if it has to do with sports, somewhere in your past you have a history of success. That's not flaky. You have that history. That is the truth of the matter. So you have evidence to support, hey, I've been in similar situations like this in the past. Maybe it was 10 years ago. Maybe it was 10 days ago. If I've done it before, I can do it again. So yeah, I know it's a new challenge, but it, 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 instead of worrying, can I do it? Can I do it? Woe is me. What am I going to do? Then what you do is you go into scarcity. You go into survival mode. The brain takes over, and you're right. Nothing will happen. But when you study a past success and you appreciate it, you go into a more open state. You create that new state of being that allows your best self to emerge. Because, hey, I've been there, done that. That's very important. Start creating that. If you're not a silver trained student, you do it by studying past successes. And so maybe also chunk it down where you're doing a little bit at a time. You make a little bit of progress. All right. I did it. Exactly. And that gives you confidence. Okay, now let's take a little bit higher. Let's go a little bit better. And you, you're doing it a little bit at a time. Great. Well, I don't know. I don't see any more questions. My dear friends, if there is anybody who wants to, to put a question, because we're already almost one hour and a half online. Can, can you imagine that time flies? I really? <laughs> And this is what happens also in alpha states, time and, and space is different. But now we are in a beta in a beta state. So if there is no any question, uh, I would like to close here our events today. And I would like to thank you for your time. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm very positive that we're going to have questions later on when we're going to post it on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. But we're gonna may, probably we're gonna organize other meetings and we're gonna uh, answer some questions. And as you 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 while we were explaining uh, the six steps, I already had some other questions that we can talk about uh, next time in a in the next meeting and event. Sure, and I, I just add something too as another resource for you. I know you have this too, so certainly remind them. But a friendly reminder is. I frequently am making training videos. So I would invite you as another resource that will help you. There's no charge for them. They're on my blog page or on my YouTube channel, silvermethodct.com or Silver Method of Connecticut. Or you can just Google Silver Method of Boston or of Chicago. It'll take you to my the link for my page. But if you go on the blog page, there's quite a few of them. I'm getting better and better with that. And there's a couple on confidence that will teach you, you know, and other, other frameworks um, for that. I watch videos all the time, you know, many times during the week. It's a way to kind of keep on top of things and stay inspired. And, and I really appreciate being here, the opportunity. I love doing this work. And for those of you here, whether you the replay or you've been here with us live, and hey, Anka and Christy, I just saw that pop up. I have to say hi. These are two of our friends, silver instructors in another part of Romania. And I used to think I was wild and crazy and silly as a presenter. And I think Christy puts me to shame. <laughs> He's so much fun uh, and also helpful. Uh, I, when we were there in Romania, there, when, I have to say this in Romania, those of you there, you have such an incredible team. Every time I'm there, everybody pitches in and is there in the class and assisting with the translation and supporting the students. And it, 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 it it's it's a high. It's so joyful. So thank you for gracing us with your presence, watching through, especially if you're still watching, whether it be the replay or otherwise, that says a lot about you, that you're not just trolling along looking for quick fix. If you're looking for a quick fix, Silver Method isn't for you. And thank honestly, you. working in, in this field for almost 30 years, I didn't find anything that's a quick fix. So <laughs> you have to work it out. <laughs> I, I'm 50 years and I stopped looking, my friend. It's, and yeah. I would say be wary because there are a lot of our marketing techniques that create the illusion of quick fix and 
you know, they take a seminar, they read a book, and they become experts, and they have marketing that makes it look like the second coming of every avatar <laughs> ever. <laughs> well, Ken, thank you very much once again. Pleasure. Thanks to everybody who is watching or was watching this beautiful meeting, nice meeting. Uh, so, well, you can see again this uh, interview and the six steps uh, very soon on uh, my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned, stay connected, and do better and better. Thank you, Ken, once again. See you next time, and have a great day.